Hello. Today we're going to have a look at the first of the plantings in our new vegetable garden. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By the Farm. For our first half a year here, I've designated this area uh, to grow some veg in and uh, discovered that everywhere here is full of bunnies. Uh, so I'm doing an awful lot of preparation in terms of trying to prevent rabbits from being able to get at our crops, as well as trying to get uh, some basics in. So uh, this frame is exactly the same as I did in Monmouthshire. Uh, posts going into the ground and then tubes going into those. The other alternative is to put bamboo sticks, uh, bamboo canes into the ground and the tubing over the top of it. I have lots of these tunnels uh, with green netting on them. And there are various different types of netting that you can get that is designed specifically for keeping butterflies out. And when I first started uh, growing in this garden, uh, I decided I would try using scaffolding netting. So this is uh, scaffold debris netting. Uh, and it, it has a bit of a problem in that uh, it actually comes with holes in it, <laughs> which if you're trying to exclude uh, butterflies and moths, is not terribly helpful. So it has, it has a line um, down most of it that has uh, eyelet holes reinforced in it and what I've done here is uh, taken it into the house uh, and I've sewn along it to I've made a fold and I've sewn along it um, and then I folded it flat and sewn along it again so I now have quite a smooth flat piece of material you can leave it with the flap sticking up uh, and you can use it <laughs> without I still have a couple of tunnels uh, where I haven't sewn it up. So I've got the material uh, to put over my brassicas, but I don't really want it lying straight on to the brassicas because the butterflies can then land on the netting and lay their eggs uh, through the netting. So it's better if you can devise some sort of frame uh, for it to go over. And then along the side, uh, I've put down uh, some long pieces of wood some short posts into the ground and in some of the places I've screwed through to secure them uh, in place. In other places they're not secured in but they are quite heavy bits of wood so my hope is that uh, rabbits won't easily move out of them out of the way. Now of course rabbits can dig so uh, they could dig under it but there's so much else to eat here that I'm hoping that will just be enough of a deterrent. So in here I have put uh, some weed suppressing membrane. It's a cornstarch one so it will break down over the season. And then through that I have planted some brassicas. I've got uh, some red cabbages and some savoy cabbages in here. And I was given these uh, really kindly by Saron over at So Grow and Cook and also um, Adam Unrath. They both knew that we were moving this year and offered to grow some plants for us. Uh, a couple of years ago, when Saron um, moved to her home, I said, well, it's a bad time of year for you to be moving. Why don't I grow your brassicas for you? And so not long after she'd moved, she came down to me, collected a whole load of brassicas, and really nicely this year, uh, she's done the same for me. So I've got a row of brassicas in, uh, and I've now got um, some seedlings of things like chard and beetroot, uh, multi-sown in modules, uh, ready to plant in here too. This walk-in fruit cage is one that we brought with us uh, from Monmouthshire. It's the one that I had so much trouble uh, putting together previously, uh, and was not so bad this time because I knew what I was doing. Uh, I have put in uh, a T-post here and at the other end, and secured uh, the frame to it. Not, it's not a huge amount of extra support, but it will just stop it uh, from rocking in the wind. I'm not sure yet what the winds will be like here, so I thought I would put this in for added stability because I haven't been able to get these posts very far into the ground. In Monmouthshire, we managed to get them into the ground a good six inches or so, they recommend at least a foot into the ground. Well, here, uh, it's only a matter of two or three inches. So I did add that extra support. And in here, I'm going to grow 
the taller brassicas. So some uh, Brussels sprouts and some kale, uh, Cavallo Nero kale. And likewise, I've been given those plants by my friends uh, ready to get straight in. So I will uh, get some cardboard down on the ground, uh, make a hole in the cardboard, plant through that, and then uh, some compost on top to hold the cardboard down to help suppress some weeds and then also to nourish the soil. And along here, which was actually the first thing I did when we moved in, was I put cardboard down and I put a whole load uh, of rotted manure on top of it. It's quite interesting to see uh, which weeds are growing in it. Uh, there's some broadleaf weeds which uh, I find comforting in some ways because that tells me that there's less likely uh, to be amino pyrolid uh, in the uh, hay that uh, the horses have eaten. And if you're not sure about all the issues around amino pyrolids uh, in hay and in compost, uh, Charles Dowding has made some really good videos about it. I'll leave links to that uh, in the video description. And the next thing I need to do uh, is to remove those weeds and mulch this area with some ordinary compost uh, to block the light uh, so they don't grow any further. In this uh, I have planted uh, several potatoes, uh, seed potatoes of um, Sapo Mira and I'm just looking and each one uh, looks like it's been hollowed out by slugs but it hasn't stopped the plants growing so it does look like we are likely to have uh, a small potato harvest uh, before uh, the frosts really set in. Don't need loads, uh, I just wanted to feel like I'd grown a few this year. And then at this end I've got some squashes. These are all courgette plants. I put these seeds into some compost a couple of weeks before we moved. Uh, they've germinated, I grew them on in pots and I brought them out here. So I've made a hole through the cardboard uh, into the soil, planted them in there, wrapped the cardboard back round and then given them uh, a mulch of compost. And it doesn't look pretty, I realise that, but at the moment uh, I'm conserving the amount of compost I'm using, so just uh, using it as a mulch over the top. These courgettes are a combination of uh, Genovese and Nero de Milan, and I think there's also, possibly the one at this end, is a yellow climbing courgette, which I thought might be quite interesting. Uh, but what I do need to do is put a pole uh, from here up to the fence there to give it something to climb onto. In comparison to my courgettes at uh, this time of year in Monmouthshire, uh, these are very small. But that's not about it being cooler here. That's about them being grown in pots. And some of them are still in pots, uh, as you can see. And that is inhibiting their growth because they've used all the nutrients in the soil their roots need to get further out uh, to get established and get some food. And although that particular uh, baby courgette isn't going anywhere, there's one up here uh, that might do. So I need to get these into the ground too. I'm going to make some sort of teepee shape for the last three climbing courgettes to go up. Uh, I need to get that done in the next day or two. Over here in the manure heap, uh, I put in a blue hubbard squash. And I planted this about the same time as I put the ones into the garden there. And I think you can see the difference. These enormous leaves, um, <laughs> it's already got down to the bottom of the heap. It's producing some very small squashes already. It's looking super healthy. So that's very, very encouraging uh, to know just how much goodness is in this heap. So given that we've only been here for a month and there has been uh, so much other work to do uh, right across the homestead, I'm quite pleased with the start. And over the next week or so, hopefully, I should be getting lots more into the ground. Well, it's started raining again. And although I'm happy to work in the rain, the camera isn't. And so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today, I hope it's a good one. And I also hope you'll join me again next time. <laughs>